What's up, fam? How you feeling? This is episode one, the first drop of Kicks and Convos. Man, I'm telling you, this has been a long time coming. I've been really uh, pondering this thought and even trying to make sense of this thought for uh, some time. I mean, it was something that really had came to me in the process of going through the pandemic where we were actually quarantined. And I was trying to find out a way, something creative, and even as much as just trying to um, uh, shed some light on some of my interests, but at the same time, giving some form of inspiration and uh, dialogue. And I felt uh, that, you know, what better way than to take my interests as well as inspiration, allow them to collide on one platform, and I called it Kicks and Convos. Um, I'm excited about this. I'm really, really am because again, um, uh, as most of you all may know, if you do not know, um, I am a pastor, pastor unity church in Compton, California. And, um, man, I have this real strong interest in tennis shoes. Yeah. Sneakers, um, be it Jordans, be it Adidas, be it Nike, uh, Air Max, Air Force Ones, uh you name it collaborations colorways all of that uh that actually is an interest of mine and i've been uh really kind of rocking with uh tennis shoes for a minute now and um but i really began to look at it and i started trying to try to figure out like where did this really birth you know out of and i often tell tell this story and this story is very very uh unique uh, unique to me. Um, I can recall being, I think it was about, it's either, yeah, I think it was fourth or fifth grade. Um, back in 1985, you know. No, but um, I can recall the time, <laughs> looking back at that time, I was going to a Christian school. There were no uniforms and anything like that. Um, but everybody was rocking uh, at that particular time. You had either a Latigger shirt or a Lacoste uh, shirt. And you had some 501 Levi's and you will rock them with some K-Swiss, ice, white, crisp, clean. Can I say cocaine white? Is that, is that, that's all right. I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, um, cocaine white, uh, K-Swiss. And man, I remember those shoes, man. Um, and my, my particular, uh, uh, dad would not spin over <laughs> about uh, 25 to about $30 on, on some tennis shoes. That was expensive to him. Um, and I can recall in that particular time, I think the case was running about 54, 60 something dollars. And so my father was like, no, we ain't buying that. We're going to go down here uh, to pay less shoe store. And I'm like, man, how am I going to go the first day of school with a Latigger shirt, some 501 Levi's that my mom got from Miller's Outpost. That lets you know how old you are. It wasn't a Levi's store. It was called Miller's Outpost. Um, and then uh, um, I had to come in there with some pro wings, some shoes from Payless. And the shoes from Payless was about $12.99. That was, my father said, those shoes was good shoes. Those wore well. Good soul on those shoes. And um, and I was trying to figure out, like, man, come on, pop star, are you really serious? You want me on my fifth grade year to walk in there where image is something now. I mean, before, you really didn't have no concern about image. You weren't looking at, you know, wouldn't worry about your haircut. You wouldn't worry about how you was looking. You was just really big on making sure you looked right. And man, believe it or not, my pops made sure uh, I had to come in there with some pro wings. But we was at Payless and I'm looking. I don't like nothing that I'm seeing. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Father's like, hurry up, boy. You got to hurry and pick something out. And I'm like, I'm looking, I'm looking at him. Boom. Lo and behold, I found some pro wings that look just like K-Swiss. 
I said, okay, maybe I can get away with it. You know, maybe my pants will cover up uh, the sign on the back that says Pro Wings. And so I went ahead and got them. And first day of school, um, I wore those shoes. Fit looked good, but the shoes were Pro Wings. Now, here's what's interesting, that as I'm walking into school, this particular school, First Lutheran, they have from, from kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. So I'm in fifth grade. So these seventh and eighth graders are sitting on the steps. We had to walk by these steps. And I was walking. And um, they looked. They said, uh-oh, he got a little Tigger shirt on. And I was like, yeah, yeah, they checking me out. Oh, he got the 501s. They creased. Yeah, I said, yeah, got it. They said, wait, 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 hold up. Now, if anybody know, K-Swiss has, I think, only five stripes on the side. My Pro Wings <laughs> had seven. And so all I can hear as I'm walking by, <laughs> they started counting the stripes on my shirt. Y'all ain't hearing me right now. Are y'all serious? They're counting the stripes on my shoes. And watch this, y'all. It was so amazing. Uh, I'm sitting up here trying to, you know, I'm trying to walk faster. Because <laughs> I'm trying to, like, maybe if I move my feet a little faster, they won't see all the different stripes on the side. So they was like, one, two, three. And they got down. They said, wait a minute. Five. They said, hold up. I see six. And then another guy said, no, I see seven. <laughs> Are you serious? Y'all counted the stripes man and i was literally like i am not going back to school with them shoes again <laughs> i'm not doing it i can't i can't i can't y'all y'all are hearing me i'm serious y'all i'm like i am boycotting going to school because of the fact that i was totally embarrassed and i remember my mom was saying get that boy some shoes get him some shoes get him what he want and um and in that particular time uh what was the shoe believe it or not was michael jordan's um um his shoe that just came out air jordan shoes and i remember my first pair of nike jordans was right there right after the whole case was and um man i was so glad to get those shoes and then after that my mom got me some Pumas, and I was like, man, this is what it's all about. And from there, there was just, what grew in me was, was this affinity to just rock tennis shoes. Now, some of you all may not really understand or even think that that has any bearing or any significant value, but oftentimes we find ourselves falling victim to, to image. <laughs> We find the opinions of people being something that uh, warrants our efforts to make sure that others are pleased. Now, it wasn't that the shoe was not protecting my foot. It wasn't that the shoe <laughs> wasn't, you know, uh, a good shoe. It wasn't that the shoe was dirty, but the shoe was clean. But because of the name on the shoe that everybody has claimed to be a weak name uh, i thought within myself that the image or the brand of that shoe was worthless in comparison to the thoughts of others rather than the maker of the shoe um and we find ourselves falling victim to that because sometimes we get caught up in the image and our image is driven by the very thought that we have of what people think rather than realizing that the maker god himself yes has made us with value and made us clean and made us significant where god is taking you he can take you with whatever shoe you have on <laughs> um with, yeah not to my fifth grade self i wouldn't have been, never believed that but <laughs> i realize and understand and y'all got to understand what i'm saying right you know what i'm saying that you have to realize your value you have to realize how significant you are because 
you don't know where God is taking you. You don't know where you're walking. You don't know where you're headed. People will drive you to their mode and model, and they will always want you to appease them when you're walking in a particular place that is not conducive for your flow. You know, one of the things very significant that I find to be uh, profoundly true is that um, when you're always gripped by the opinions of people, um, they can easily shape you, they can mold you, they can cause you to become something that you have never ever desired to be uh, because they'll try to convince you that this is the way, they'll convince you that this is how it's supposed to be you know um I'm, I'm just of the full persuasion at this particular point in life that that you can't let people dictate how you carry out what it is that you feel god has given you um and so when i was looking at being in the fifth grade i'm so um big on the image not for myself but more so uh how others would view me um and kind of reminding me of this particular uh, um, story, this particular uh, uh, king who had this affinity for clothes. He had this strong desire for clothing and he wanted to always wear the finest clothes and have the best of the best. And these two con men came up and they really um, started trying to convince the king that they had uh, the best garments and they had the best material and the best thread and they said, this thread is so unique. This thread is so, so powerful that even when you wear it, it's it's invisible. The king says, yes, that's the type of outfit that I want. That's what I want. And he, um, they said, but before we can make this particular outfit, we need a deposit, right? And uh, crazy as it is, was amazing that they 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 got this deposit he he called for the treasury of the kingdom and took this lump sum and he gave it to the con man the con man started you know preparing the garments and they started um trying to bring things together and they was pretending for real like they was making this garment but this garment was supposed to be quote unquote invisible right and um and as they're making these garments king is wondering hey when's my garments gonna be ready when's my garments gonna be finished and they he sends his assistants um to go check out the men so they went to the house and they're looking at these men and they're uh they see the men through the window and they're pretending like they're sewing things and they walked in they said uh where is the king's garments they said you don't see it and the assistant said no, I, I don't see it. They said, you don't see the pattern. You don't see the garments there. And um, the assistants not wanting to come back to the king with, you know, bad news that they don't have the garments. They said, oh, yes, yes, we see it. We see it. Um, um, oh, it looks nice. So they went back and reported to the king, man, you're going to love what they're making. You're going to love the garments. You're going to love how they're going to. Uh, uh, how they're going to lay on you. They, they're, they're nice, the garments, the patterns, everything. So the king, really not believing those assistants, he says, let me go ahead and send uh, another set of assistants to go check out uh, the garments. This other set of assistants went, and as they went, they themselves didn't see it, right? They couldn't make out what it was. And so um, the, the con men said, you don't see the garments? And the sister says, uh, I don't want to go back and have the king think that I didn't see it. So, yeah, yeah, I see it. I just want to report to him that what the first assistant saw was really here. So he went back. He says, yeah, yeah, the king, the garments are there. The pattern is nice. And the king said, what kind of pattern is it? He said, well, you know, it's a unique pattern. So the king at this particular point is not believing the two set of assistants, right? And so King says, come on. He grabs his security, he grabs his entourage, he grabs everybody. And they go down to where the con men are putting the garments together. And the con man says, oh, King, you made it. We're just in time. We just finished your garments. 
And so the king is sitting there. He says, well, where are they? He says, they're invisible. You know, he says, he says, uh, okay. He says, well, we need you to take your garments off. We want you to put these garments on. And um, the king puts the garment, they pretend to put the garment rather on him, right? And um, uh, the king is standing there naked. And he's naked, but he's, he's saying, okay, the garment is on me. He's asking his assistants, what do you think? And the assistant said, oh, oh, you look good, king. You look good. Things look well. Until one lady was walking by with her son um, and says, mommy, look, the king is naked. <laughs> oh, my issue with that story is not with the con men, but my issue of that particular story is with those in whom the king had entrusted that if you have the wrong people in your life saying you look good based upon what they claim they see, they'll have you walking around here looking crazy. Guys in the fifth grade who were older than me um, could have just kind of had a conversation with me, uh, but rather they made jokes, which could have literally depressed me, could have caused maybe some type of, of uh of, of emotional issue uh maybe that's the reason why i buy so many sneakers now because i got <laughs> got traumatized right oh uh, but i believe that there is a uh, value in having the right people in your space and here's the next one having the right people in your face because you're going somewhere you're walking somewhere you're trying to achieve something and you cannot just have in and everybody around you who will literally take you out of the mindset, right? Or the space or the mentality uh, that that is intended for your success. Well, man, this is what Kicks and Convos is all about. I mean, it's just about conversation and as much as bringing uh, an interest and allowing it to collide. I um. I feel it's very significant to understand um, the power and the significance of knowing yourself. You know, I think one of the challenges has often been the fact that people fall victim uh, to the lack of understanding who they are. And when you lack the understanding of who you are, you can easily be defined by somebody who is not even um, interested in you. You know, you got people sometimes who always say, you know, um, uh, certain people are always trying to holler at me, but you don't even realize that people that be trying to holler at you is nothing but snakes. You know, um, just because something's trying to come at you or get at you doesn't mean that it's right for you. Um, you got to start to clarify what should be and what should not be in your life. Um, I, I wrote some down. I wanted to read it. Let me say this to you because I want, I want to make sure I quote it right. It says, you cannot allow the desire of who you want somebody to be to seduce your imagination. You cannot allow your desire of who you want somebody to be to seduce your imagination. Uh, just because you want them to be one thing, right, um, um, doesn't mean that they are. And a lot of times we find ourselves in that on both sides of the spectrum. We're at a place where on one side we have this desire that we want somebody to be like this. But at the same time, you become the individual who's the recipient of that, that you're trying to live up to a particular standard that you were never, it was never engrafted in you to be. And so we have this back and forth. We vacillate between these opinions and even as much as our, our, our thoughts of ourselves. But when you get to the place you really understand who you are and you walk in who you are, you begin to embrace who you are, you start to see that who you are is of more value than you trying to be something that somebody wanted you to be. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm at the place particular, particular time now, I'm at, I'm, at, I'm at the place mindset rather now that I start to realize I'm good and I'm cool with just being who I am. Uh, I know it's a common statement, you know, take it or leave it, you know, uh, but I think I'm really of a clearer persuasion now that in life, you're going to have some people that just don't like you. There's some shoes that come out that I look and I say, man, nah, 
But then there are some shoes that come out. I'm like, man, I got to get those. But then at the same time, there's also some shoes that come out that I don't like the first time. But then after a while, they grow on me. These shoes are now starting to gain such a level of value the older they get. But I came across something that was very significant. I was looking at um, this particular uh, Instagram um, page and they, the statement was, wear your shoes for God's sake. Uh, because some people try to keep their shoes in a box and they try to preserve them and not, not wear them and try to keep them um, um, fresh and clean, not knowing that oxidation happens, the shoe starts to break down, the rubber gets old, it dries out and it dry rots. And then when you try to put the shoe on, the shoe literally almost falls apart. <laughs> uh, some of us can be held in a box for too long to the degree that you never ever amount to become what you were intended for, what you was created for. I mean, what else was a shoe made for? A shoe was made to be worn. A shoe was made for you to be able to walk a longer distance. And the question that I have as we just having this little conversation, um, the value of who you are has been boxed in for so long that you have that you have not become or are being used for what you were created and made for and made to be i mean how long do you think you could remain in a box unseen unnoticed uh, looked over and how long watch this how long will you be able to hold yourself together without falling apart when it's time for you to be used uh, what better way than to be you step out of the box do something different uh, risk something take a take a step out challenge yourself do something that will cause you to see you in a different light instead of being around people who will see your nakedness but won't check it uh, get around some people that will challenge your thought space challenge your ingenuity challenge what it is that you have been commissioned and called to do i mean think about it there's power in what it is that you have in your head right now some of us are missing the very opportunities to be able to express those things or even to um bring those things to light as i was talking to some of the others i was talking about the shoe it's called the dunk and that shoe was considered to be almost like a flop almost you know the one that really took off was the air force one right and the air jordan the dunk was almost the one that was kind of shelved but then it got unshelved because nike decided they wanted to go ahead and take that whole dunk shoe and started using different colorways and then even it went into a whole nother market space called skateboarding and they kind of thickened out the tongue they're thinking out uh, uh some of the area around where the foot goes in and, and 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 that shoe started becoming more popular to skateboarders and then skateboarders started showing other different colorways and other different thoughts and and other creativity and that shoe became a sought after shoe once a shoe that was shelved that began to recreate itself became something that everybody had desired i don't care how old you are i don't care how long you've been shelved i don't care how far you have gone away from what you have been intended to do you still can come back and serve your purpose well and then also become a sought out individual um, a creative an influencer you can i don't care how old you are there's people of older age that that has um, risen in this whole new era and time of social media and has made such an impact 
because they begin to find self, finding who they are. I want to know if you knew all of who you are and what you had the ability to do, how much more would you be able to accomplish? I think there's a lot that God is going to use you for if you just open yourself up to do a lot in what God has gifted you to do. So Kicks and Convos, y'all, is the place you want to be. This is a uh, episode one, drop number one. Um, we got about, about nine more drops, and I think y'all want to make sure y'all get them because, again, it's going to be an amazing time. I, I, I want to I wanna pause, and I really want to kind of close with this statement because I think it's very significant that as you have been listening and as you've been paying attention, there's something that um, I believe God has assigned for me to tell you um, in this whole thought of, you know, understanding you and who you are and what God has called you to do. Um, put your shoes on, um, put your sneakers on um, and get ready to walk in them. Because what God is getting ready to cause you to do, he's getting ready to cause you to walk a distance. And the distance that you're walking is not for you to walk into more pain and more issues. But God is going to cause you to walk a distance from the very people that try to devalue you. Uh, all you have to do is keep on walking. Because when I go back to the fifth grade, one thing I realized and understood was that the young men that made fun of me, um, I kept walking. I didn't stop. I didn't turn around. I didn't, I didn't try to fight. I kept walking. And when I kept walking, I realized the power of who I was came by way of how far I got away from them. So I'm just trying to get you to understand the further you get away from the thing or, or them or it that's devaluing you, the stronger, the better, the wiser, the more profound you'll be. Let's keep walking. This is Kicks and Convos. I'm Johnny Withers. Looking forward to the next episode, the next drop. Come check us out. Peace.